Bitter winds swept through the open auditorium doors as I, Clara, adjusted my thin shawl around my shoulders. My fingers were crossed tightly, waiting for the announcement that would decide my daughter's future. As a single mother, I had sacrificed everything to provide Emma with the best education I could afford. This scholarship was the key to her dreams, the culmination of all our hopes. Students and parents were anxiously chattering amongst themselves, their breaths creating fleeting clouds in the crisp air. The dean took the podium, adjusting his glasses. Ladies and gentlemen, he began, his voice carrying weight, it's a significant day for all of us as we gather to announce this year's scholarship winner. I squeezed Emma's hand, feeling her nerves as much as my own. Our combined dreams rested on this announcement. Against all odds, the dean continued with a dramatic pause. This year's scholarship goes to Tristan Carmichael. The auditorium went silent for a split second before whispers erupted like wildfire. Tristan Carmichael, the son of the wealthiest family in town? The murmurs grew louder, the shared shock palpable. His academic record was mediocre at best, and everyone had anticipated that Emma, with her outstanding grades and extracurricular achievements, was the obvious choice. Next to me, Emma's face turned pale, her eyes glistening with tears she was fighting to hold back. It's okay, Mom, she whispered, squeezing my hand back, trying to comfort me when it should have been the other way around. My friend Jenna, another parent, leaned over, her face a mask of disbelief. This doesn't make any sense, Clara. Everyone knew Emma was the front runner. There's something off here. I nodded, struggling to contain my rising anger. I don't understand. She worked so hard, Jenna. Another parent, Marcus, chimed in. It's politics, Clara. The Carmichaels have their hands in everything. I looked at Emma, her brave face unable to mask the disappointment in her eyes. I felt a surge of determination. This isn't over. I whispered more to myself than anyone else. Not by a long shot. Jenna gave me a knowing look. If anyone can get to the bottom of this, it's you, Clara. And so, amidst the echoing whispers and a game rigged by wealth, our fight began. For truth, for justice, for Emma. The moonlight streamed through Emma's window, casting a dim glow over her tear-streaked face. I sat by her bedside, stroking her hair and whispering words of comfort, my heart shattering a bit more with each of her broken-hearted sobs. It's not fair, Mom, she whispered between her tears. I worked so hard. What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong, Emma, I reassured her, though my own doubts gnawed at my mind. You're brilliant, kind, and deserving. Sometimes, life throws us curveballs. Emma's eyes met mine, her pain evident. But why Tristan? He barely attended half his classes. As the night deepened and Emma's tears finally gave way to the relief of sleep, I found myself replaying the last few months in my head. The Carmichaels, Tristan's family, had thrown several grand parties recently. Though I never attended, they weren't exactly my crowd. I heard that members of the scholarship committee were often seen enjoying the Carmichael's lavish hospitality. The dots started to connect. A few days later, our small town held its annual spring festival. The entire community turned out, filling the streets with laughter, music, and the tantalizing scent of freshly baked pies and roasted corn. As Emma participated in a singing competition, I wandered around, buying homemade jams and admiring crafts. My aimless wandering brought me close to a tented VIP area, presumably for the town's elite. I wouldn't have paid it any attention if not for the familiar laughter that floated out. The Carmichaels. Curiosity peaked, I discreetly moved closer, hidden behind a tall shrub. Mrs. Carmichael's shrill voice was unmistakable. I still can't believe we pulled it off, she giggled. Oh, come on, darling, replied a male voice, probably Mr. Carmichael. Money talks, as always. Another laugh. True, but imagine the look on Clara and her daughter's faces when they heard the announcement. Their gleeful laughter sent shivers down my spine. Fury bubbled within me, but I maintained my composure, focusing on every word. 
A third voice, one I recognized as the head of the scholarship committee, chimed in, you know the girl did deserve it, but a deal's a deal. The conversation shifted to more mundane topics, but I had heard enough. With each heartbeat, my resolve solidified. The Carmichaels had played dirty, but I wasn't about to let them rob my daughter of her dreams. As I walked away from the tent, my path crossed with Jenna. One look at my face, and she knew something was up. What happened, Clara? She inquired, her brow furrowed with concern. Pulling her aside, I relayed everything I overheard. Her shock mirrored my own. We need to expose them, Clara. This can't stand. I nodded, determination filling my every pore. I promise, Emma will get the recognition she deserves, and the Carmichaels will pay for their deceit. Our fight had only just begun, and I was ready. Days turned into nights and nights into days as I, Clara, embarked on a mission to expose the truth. Every moment not spent at work or with Emma was dedicated to this cause. I felt like I was living in a spy novel, surreptitiously meeting contacts, whispering in hushed tones, and collecting evidence. I would do whatever it took to ensure justice for Emma. One evening, as I was poring over bank statements and suspicious transaction records that might link the Carmichaels to the scholarship committee, my old college friend Marcus, now a journalist, rang me up. Clara, he began hesitantly, I've been hearing things about what you're trying to do. If it's true, I might have some contacts who can help. Gratitude filled me. Yes, Marcus, it's true, and I'll take any help I can get. He connected me with Leela, a tech whiz who had once helped a mutual friend retrieve lost data. Leela was a wizard with computers, and with her neon green hair and multiple piercings, she looked every bit the part. She was young, maybe in her early twenties, but her reputation was legendary. Over cups of strong coffee, I briefed her on the situation. I need evidence, concrete proof that the Carmichaels manipulated this scholarship. Leela smirked, her fingers dancing over her laptop's keyboard. Give me a week, she promised. True to her word, in less than a week, Leela handed over a flash drive. You'll find some interesting email exchanges in there, she said, winking. Oh, and some suspicious bank transfers. I was about to express my gratitude when a discreet envelope landed in my mailbox. No return address, just my name. Curiously, I opened it to find a letter and some documents. The letter read, Asterisk, dear Clara, I'm a member of the scholarship committee. My conscience won't let me be a part of this heinous act any longer. Find enclosed evidence of the Carmichael's bribes and manipulation. I can't reveal my identity for fear of repercussions, but I trust you'll use this information wisely. Asterisk, an insider with a conscience asterisk. Tears filled my eyes. This was it. The breakthrough I had been waiting for. Armed with the flash drive and the documents, I felt a rush of hope. The Carmichaels wouldn't know what hit them. That evening, over dinner, I shared the developments with Emma. She listened, eyes widening, her dinner growing cold. Mom, she whispered, gripping my hand tightly. You're incredible. I squeezed back, a tear trickling down. I promised you justice. We're close, sweetheart. The wheels of justice were finally in motion, and nothing could halt their momentum now. The following weeks were a whirlwind, unlike anything I, Clara, had ever experienced. As the first rays of sunlight streamed into my kitchen, my phone buzzed with an incoming call. Marcus' name flashed on the screen. Clara, he began without any pleasantries, I've talked to my editor. They want to run the story on prime time. Are you ready for this? I took a deep breath. Yes, Emma deserves justice. In the days that followed, my living room transformed into a makeshift interview set. Bright lights, large cameras, and a constant hum of activity became the norm. Emma and I were interviewed by the top journalist from the National Channel. Her sharp questions and our candid answers resonated with thousands. Clara, how does it feel knowing such influential people tried to rob your daughter of her rightful place? I feel betrayed, I confessed, 
looking directly into the camera. But more than that, I feel furious. No one should be able to use their wealth or influence to trample over someone else's dreams. The broadcast was explosive. Social media caught onto the injustice like wildfire. Hashtags like hashtag justice for Emma and hashtag scholarship scandal trended overnight. The Carmichael family was thrust into the limelight, but for all the wrong reasons. The public backlash was immense. Local stores refused to serve members of the Carmichael family. Their once adored son, the undeserving scholarship recipient, was now an outcast in his own community. Their legacy, built over decades, was crumbling like a house of cards. A few days after the broadcast, I received an unexpected visit. The college's dean, a stern-looking man with salt and pepper hair, stood at my doorstep. Ms. Clara, he began, his voice quivering slightly, we are sincerely apologetic for the oversight. The board has decided to review the scholarship decision. It's about time, I replied, trying to maintain my composure. What followed was an intense scrutiny of the entire scholarship process. The results were as expected. The Carmichaels had bribed key members of the committee, skewing the process in their favor. The college revoked the undeserved scholarship and, in a very public ceremony, awarded it to Emma. She stood on that stage, a symbol of hope and perseverance, her eyes shining brighter than any medal or award. The legal repercussions for the Carmichaels were swift and severe. Charges of bribery, fraud, and even some previous undisclosed white-collar crimes came to light. The mighty had fallen, and the world was watching. One evening, amidst the chaos, I sat with Emma on our porch. The weight of the last few months evident in our eyes, but our spirits were unbroken. Mom, Emma whispered, her voice choked with emotion, we did it. Yes, we did, I replied, holding her close. The fight had been tough, but the victory was sweet. The Carmichaels had met their match in a determined single mother and her brilliant daughter. The world now knew that truth and justice, no matter how delayed, always prevailed. The air in our home was electric. Newspapers and television channels were filled with Emma's story. She became a beacon of hope, a symbol of perseverance against injustice. The most significant triumph for her wasn't just the scholarship, but the outpouring of support and respect she gained from all quarters. My phone rang incessantly. Deans from prestigious colleges, representatives from scholarship programs, and even the heads of several academic institutions wanted a moment with Emma. They were not just impressed by her grades, but by the young woman she had become, resilient, strong, and graceful. Mom, Emma began one morning, spreading out several college brochures on the kitchen table. Look at this, MIT, Harvard, Stanford. They're all reaching out. I leaned in, glancing at the myriad of colors and college logos. You've earned every bit of this, darling. One evening, as we sat sipping tea, there was a soft chime from Emma's laptop. A new email notification flashed on her screen. With bated breath, she opened it. The email was from Oxford University, offering her a full scholarship to pursue her desired course. Tears welled up in Emma's eyes. Mom, this, this is beyond anything I had dreamt of. I always knew you were meant for great things, I said, enveloping her in a warm embrace. As the weeks turned into days and days into hours, the moment of Emma's departure was upon us. Our little home, which had witnessed so much, laughter, tears, hope, despair, was filled with a bittersweet feeling. On the date of her departure, our driveway was filled with suitcases. Emma was dressed in a simple white tee and blue jeans, her hair tied back, and those familiar determined eyes shining bright. I took a deep breath, trying to hold back my tears. Remember, life will throw challenges at you some fair and some not. But always stand tall, be true to yourself, and keep moving forward. Emma looked at me, her eyes glistening. Mom, everything I am, everything I've become is because of you. You've been my rock, my guiding light. I promise to make you proud.
We hugged, and in that moment, the world seemed to stand still. The pain of parting was sharp, but the pride I felt for Emma was overwhelming. She boarded her flight, and as I watched the plane take off, soaring into the vast blue sky, I knew Emma was on her way to not just pursue her dreams but to conquer them. I had not only secured a future for my daughter, but had also taught the world a lesson, that privilege, when unchecked, could topple even the mightiest. But above all, it reaffirmed the belief that with determination and truth on one side, justice would always prevail. The first hints of autumn painted the town golden. Leaves swirled in the breeze, creating a carpet of amber and copper. As I sat in our quiet home, Memories of Emma surrounded me, her childhood drawings still stuck to the fridge, her favorite books lining the shelves, and her soft blanket draped over the couch. It was in these silent moments, with the fireplace crackling softly, that I felt the weight of her absence most. One chilly morning, my phone buzzed to life with a stream of notifications. As I swiped to view them, my heart swelled with emotion. Messages flooded in from family, friends, and even acquaintances, all linking to the same news article. The headline read, Emma Lawson, the rising star in genetic research. I scanned through the article, which detailed Emma's revolutionary findings in genetic mutations. Her research promised to be a turning point in treating several hereditary disorders. As I read, pride welled up in my chest, my little girl, making such significant strides in the world of science. Later that week, while sipping my morning coffee, I caught a familiar face on the television. There was Emma, looking resplendent in a blue suit, speaking with the poise and confidence of someone who had found her calling. The interviewer, a stern-looking woman with sharp glasses, leaned in. You've achieved so much in such a short time, Emma. To what do you attribute your success? Emma's eyes glistened, and her voice softened. It's all thanks to my mother, Clara. She taught me the importance of integrity, perseverance, and the belief that when you stand up for what's right, the universe stands with you. Every experiment, every late-night study session, every achievement, she's the force behind it. I felt a lump in my throat, tears threatening to spill. As Emma continued talking about our journey, our challenges, and the scholarship scandal, I was overwhelmed with emotion. Through it all, our bond had only strengthened. That evening, as the sun painted the sky in hues of pink and gold, my phone rang. Emma's familiar face lit up the screen. Answering the call, I was greeted with her radiant smile. Hey, Mom, she said, her voice tinged with excitement and exhaustion. Darling, I saw the interview. I'm so incredibly proud of you. Emma chuckled. I knew you'd be watching. Honestly, Mom, I just wanted the world to know about the woman who made me who I am. Every accolade, every recognition, it's as much yours as it is mine. We spoke for hours, sharing updates, laughter, and a few tears. As we hung up, I leaned back, a contented sigh escaping my lips. The battles we'd faced, the obstacles we'd overcome had led to this moment. A mother basking in the success of her child and a daughter eternally grateful for the unwavering support of her mother. In our struggles against privilege and deceit, we discovered the true strength of our bond. And as Emma's star continued to rise, I remained her anchor, a constant reminder of where she came from and the values that would guide her future.